Welcome back to Exotic Art Play Place, everybody. Thanks for joining in again. Today, I'm going to share with you guys five of the key maintenance items that you need to take care of to keep your beautiful BMW on the road and keep it reliable. The dealer tells you a million things that you need to maintain, but the reality is there's five major areas that you really need to focus on. And as well, at the end of the video, if you stick around, I'm going to share with you one key ingredient that's ultra important for those turbo owners, and you really need to focus in on this. It will keep your car running for many years reliably. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. And so there's lots of rhetoric out there. There's lots of forums filled with comments and people commenting that BMWs are ultra unreliable, that never ever should you own one out of warranty. They are going to break the bank, break my wallet. That is, in fact, true in some cases. However, many of these situations can be easily avoided by taking care of some basic maintenance features. I'm going to give you five of the key ones that are very important because they're the ones that are gonna keep your car on the road. A little bit of maintenance goes a long way with these cars. But how much is too much? A lot of the maintenance schedules that you find in the owner's manual are based on revenue generation. It's a dealer thing. Did you know that most dealers do not make their money on the sale of the car? They make their money on the five, 10, 15 years down the road when that car has to come back for maintenance and repairs. There are problem areas and there are engines and particular models that do have significant chronic problems. However, a lot of these issues can be sorted with some basic maintenance. So let's talk about the first key element that is a must do if you wanna keep your car on the road. And that essentially is oil changes. So why is an oil and an oil filter change so important for the life of your car? Oil does a lot of things. It's more than just lubrication. Everybody thinks oil is just there to keep all the metal shiny parts from scraping and wearing out. That's true. I mean, cars like the M5 right here with the V10, they're notoriously known for tight rod bearing tolerances, which lead to premature wear. So if you've got clean oil in there and the right type of oil, always that's going to help extend the longevity of the engine as well oil does a lot of other things in cars like the bmws now with all the turbo cars oil is utilized for lubrication for the turbo bearings and the cooling as well oil is also utilized for cooling in general throughout the engine there's lots of little internal cooling ports and just the circulation of oil in itself does carry heat from one point to another and help distribute it outside the car as well, there's one other key ingredient. There's a little part called the Vanos, which is the variable valve timing system in the BMW world. Virtually every single BMW today owns a Vanos system. And that does vary the timing of the engine. So it's very silky smooth and powerful down low, and it has the lungs at the top to keep running. But if you don't keep clean oil, that can really take a toll on rod bearings and camshaft lobes. It can also contribute to premature wear on your Vanos or your variable valve timing, which ultimately can throw your timing off. So the second key component that must be maintained without question, and it must be done religiously, is cooling system maintenance with virtually every BMW. As you can appreciate, many of the turbo cars, particularly the N54, the first twin turbo car that BMW produced here in X amount of years, was notorious for lots of breakdowns, leaks, coolant problems, and partially it's because of lots of different little individual hoses, components, unique snap fittings. But with that, part of the problem comes with just age and poor and degradation of the coolant. And coolant will start to eat away. As the pH and the acidity levels change within the coolant over years of use and heating and cooling cycles, that will start to take a toll and eat away and corrode internal parts. So it's critical and imperative that you change some of the key ingredients. For example, some of the N54 engines, we know that water pump thermostat, you might as well change them at 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles. You might as well also consider changing your coolant as the dealer recommends because that will take a toll if you don't. It's imperative that you change hoses and cooling system components. As you see a little bit of a leak develop, change it. As a matter of fact, if you're going in to do major work, my recommendation is, and you've got a lot of parts taken apart already on the, under the hood, change a bunch of the hoses or parts that you can gain access to. You might as well do it right then, right there. Otherwise, it'll be just your luck and mine that you'll find a major leak will spring 5,000 kilometers after you button it all up. Now, essentially, brakes are the third most major thing to consider. Now, of course, when brakes wear out, they squeal, and that's an obvious, and people just say, okay, change your brakes. Absolutely, we know that. But there's more to it than just changing your brakes. Brake fluid develops water, can develop corrosion within the lines, 
and your brake quality goes down the toilet. But the thing with BMWs and now many other manufacturers, because with a lot of the systems, you know, vector steering and you've got ABS and a lot of different control systems that utilize brake for traction control, as well as handling and braking, the tolerances are very, very tight. And typically what I've found in the past with BMW, when you get that brake warning light come on, that usually means you're not just changing the pads, you must, it's imperative that you change the discs at the same time. And while you're at it, get a new wear sensor. So the point being, the tolerances are such that you can't just do pads and turn the rotors anymore. The old term of turning your rotors is pretty much gone by the wayside, your backdoor mechanic. Realistically, these BMWs and their tight tolerances and many other manufacturers now as well, require that you change the whole package. So the fourth thing that's important and imperative that you maintain on BMWs is suspension parts. Again, we talked about tight tolerances and BMWs are known for their handling and some of their performance attributes, but that comes from the design of the suspension systems. And if you neglect things like bushings and tie rod ends and all sorts of bits and pieces, shocks, struts, whatever you have in your car, you will lose not only the quality and the performance, but you will also sometimes create dangerous conditions. The car can be wallowy, it might swerve and weave and not handle appropriately, not only in a performance fashion, but even in a safety perspective. Also, it can lead to premature wear on tires. You could get cupping and all kinds of other odd, obscure results on your tires. And your tires do tell a lot of stories. When you look at the edges of your tires or the center line of your tires, it can actually tell a bit of a situation about what might be happening under your suspension. So it's critical that you maintain your suspension, take care of it, and it will take care of you. So the fifth thing is another very important one. If you live in a northern state or Canada, maybe northern Europe, places where they use salt or gravel on the roads, it's very, very important that you keep your car clean. Look around. You see snow all over the ground. Lots of countries, for example, like Canada, do see snow on the ground as much as eight months in a given year. Now with that, they always throw salt on the roads, which helps melt the ice and it makes it safer for drivers. But sadly, that snow melt does create corrosion issues and it starts to eat the car from inside out. And it doesn't take long, sometimes as little as three to four years, and you can start to see bubbling occurring where there's corrosion busting through the paint from the inside. Nobody wants to drive a car that looks rusty because you can rebuild your engine as much as you want and change your brakes and rebuild a gearbox. But once the chassis and the body starts to rot out, that car is trash. It's really not worth its time. And honestly, nobody feels good about getting behind the wheel of a car that's just all rotted out. So honestly, keep carry your car, keep it clean, keep it waxed, and it will again show well every single year upon year. And before we get to the bonus round, I just wanna share another thing. Now there's lots of talk, what about spark plugs and spark plug wires and fuel filters and all those other little things? How about cabin air filters like you find here? Well, this is just breathing air, absolutely. Take care of it if you get an opportunity, but it's not critical to the life of the car. I'm sure, it might help your own lungs a little bit if you're in really bad conditions, but Change those at will. If you get time, fine, don't sweat it too much. Spark plugs. Every mechanic's gonna tell you, change your plugs and wires. Why? As far as I'm concerned, generally speaking, most plugs will last a long, long time. If you start developing a misfire, absolutely. If it all of a sudden says you have a misfire in cylinder number three, change the whole lot, because at that point, that's a sign. Also, if you take in a slug of bad gas and you know that's the case, for example, your car started developing bad running conditions, all of a sudden, after a fill up at a particularly stealthy gas station in the area, maybe drain that out if you can, certainly put new filters in that, that's always a good thing to do. So these are basic maintenance items that you can tackle, they're good to do, but if you're strapped in on a budget, they're not the fundamentals. To keep the engine healthy, you definitely wanna keep the oil, that's the critical, and the cooling. So get into the last and the bonus round. We'll talk about turbocharging. And of course, 95% of the cars today out there have some level of supercharging or turbocharging. Almost every BMW today, if you look at the M4s, M3s, M2s, and all of those cars, how about the M5s? Every single car has turbos, either turbo, twin turbos or single turbocharged engines. Most Audis have it now. Many of the Benzes either use turbo or supercharging. And virtually every car out there, even look at the Corvettes with supercharging that they have incorporated with their cars. Now, supercharging sometimes is a little different. Now, talking specifically about turbocharging, that little device creates so much heat 
There's so much heat generated in the turbo because the exhaust temperatures are high from the engine and that flows through the turbo, which is the prime mover, to get the turbo turning, which in turn pumps pressurized air back on the cool side into your engine for more power. That's the fundamentals. The problem with turbocharging is that heat has to go somewhere. And generally, a lot of it stays in the turbo. Some of it gets wasted out. Some of it stays under the engine compartment. But a lot of it is within the turbo. Now, here's the little tip. If you have a turbocharged car and you are doing a lot of freeway driving or you're driving it hard, maybe on the racetrack, do not ever turn the car off right away. If you're driving the car hard, say you're coming off a freeway and you're stopping over for a, you need a swig of gas for the car, you're running out of fuel, pull into the gas station. But before you turn it off, let it idle for two, three, sometimes five minutes. Otherwise, what happens is if the turbo is hot and it's just boiling over and you shut the car off, the turbo slows down and stops, that hot oil will start to coke around the turbos and the bearings and what ultimately results is premature turbo wear and it's not uncommon for people to say oh I've changed the turbos or I have turbo problems oh this car has been a problem or a nightmare because of turbo related issues lots of times it just comes down to basic care give the turbo time to cool down warm-up is a little bit important too because again cold oil needs its chance to circulate so get into it easily when the car is not fully warmed but the most important is the cool down. Again, you'll get coking around the turbo of oil and that crustifies and then ultimately the turbo will fail very, very soon. So thanks a lot, everybody. And if you got any value from this video and you'd like to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button right down here. And don't forget the notifications bell. It's going to let you know when the next great video pops out. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.